Hall. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's already back in the plenum. It's a pleasure to have you today here in um, Beijing. Um, and uh, the topic of today's speech is uh, bonus engineering, best practice processes, and examples for CCP projects. Um, it's um, in a way um, covering the topic also what uh, this drive, but uh, on a more general basis um, and going into some of the details in terms of the activities. So looking at the agenda, I would first would like to briefly um, introduce Fichtner um, from Germany and then provide an overview about the different bonus engineering services, followed by um, some slides um, more specific about the different uh, activities of the bonus engineering. And last, um, if there's still time left, I would like to present uh, some examples of um, our oldest engineering projects. So, Fichtner um, is Germany's largest independent uh, engineering consulting firm, active for now almost 100 years, and we are still family owned, which means that we're completely independent, not driven by any shareholders' interest. We have around 1,500 employees which are <coughs> dominantly based in Germany, in our head office in Stuttgart, around 500 of which. But then we have also several um, international subsidiaries and branch offices, uh, including here in the uh, Asian region. Um, hence, uh, Fichtner as an international player is uh, predominantly active outside of Germany nowadays. Um, and uh, we have some project experience in around 160 countries worldwide. And also in terms of CSP, um, our experience is spread over the globe. We have currently around 1,800 ongoing projects, um, out of which um, around 500 of these projects are covered uh, in our home office. And um, a lot of them are in the meantime related to renewable energies. Turnover to close off, it's around 250 million. So, the, the areas we are covering are uh, the typical areas of an engineering consulting firm, i.e., um, predominantly energy, but also environment, uh, which becomes more and more important, and um, also here in China, uh, water and infrastructure, as well as consulting and IT. In the area of energy, um, where I'm located in, um, in the power plant division, um, where we have a specific CSP project department dealing solely with CSP projects. Um, in the energy division, we, in the last decades, we're dealing mainly with um, conventional power uh, plants, but nowadays um, the renewable energies um, are picking up, and um, hence, even as there are different project departments dealing with PD, wind, CSP, and so on. Now, getting more specific, um, our experience in the CSP area um, here, we are some of, or one of the front runners, um, having started around 30 years um, ago um, with um, back then the first R&D projects and we uh, participated in the development of CSP technologies. Um, and then with the new area of CSP projects starting in 2005, 2006, uh, um, the real commercial project started where then Fichtner also um, uh, acted in many cases as a uh, bonus engineer. I mentioned that we uh, are also uh, globally active uh, in CSP um, projects um, and we have conducted projects in 25 countries, including China. And at the moment, we are covering around 10 projects um, with a uh, total capacity of 1 gigawatt, the largest of which is the NUA uh, 123 project. Um, so the Wasserland um, CSP complex um, with a total capacity of 450 megawatt. Uh, Fichtner is acting as technical advisor, independent engineer, um, and is predominantly doing um, testing certification and uh, factory inspections. Um, um, but I will explain this example a little later. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we're covering all the different CSP technologies. Uh, at first, the uh, majority was related to parabolic truck power plants, but we are also have been the oldest engineer of the first commercial linear tunnel power plant at AD2. Spain, um, and uh, now uh, as uh, there are more and more power projects, um, uh, solar power projects, we are also active in uh, these projects as well. So, 
talking about the channel of OBS engineering services. They cover the different project phases. And today, given also the status um, the Chinese projects are at, I will focus on the um, on the project um, time frame from NTP notice to proceed, i.e. start of construction, um, up until uh, commercial operating date. Nonetheless, OBS engineering services are typically in a project covering all different project phases. ID, starting with the project idea, through to the planning phase, up until the tendering of a project, an owner's engineer can provide valuable services to the owner in making sure that the right contractor has been selected and at first that the right technology has been chosen in the right side, and that every input data is coming into the project uh, playing an important role are set correct. But putting this aside, um, we want to focus today on the uh, project execution, i.e. the construction phase, as well as then the commissioning and testing phase. As we have learned in the previous session, um, there are some key services during this phase, and I would like to uh, mention them again first. Um, so there's the project management and coordination and control, um, which runs through the entire period. At the beginning of the project uh, execution, there is, of course, the procurement phase, uh, for which the OBS engineer can also provide valuable um, support to the owner in necessary tendering multiple lots of the project, but then also evaluating um, the bids and so on. I will come to the different activities in a second in more detail. Um, in parallel, the basic and detailed engineering uh, is going to be conducted by the contractors and being reviewed by the office engineer. And um, once uh, the basic engineering has been um, started, um, in particular the civil engineering and the site is mobilized, also the owner's engineer will be present on site, supervising any activities happening on the project site. This goes then um, from construction up to the commissioning phase, um, where then the owner's engineer is also providing the commissioning management services, and if needed, um, also then the training of the owner, but also of the plant personnel. But this heavily depends on the project setup. If it's a classical DPC contract, then the DPC contractor will um, typically take care of the training itself. And then last, uh, once the commercial operating date, um, the COD has been reached, um, and the project goes into the warranty period, um, the owner's engineer um, can further support the project during this phase as well. Now, what is the organizational structure of an owner's engineer in order to serve the mentioned services during project execution? Overall, there's, of course, a project manager uh, overseeing the, the, the project. Um, on top, there will be a project director, um, which is typically our head of um, department. And then um, there will be two streams. There will be on the one hand side a stream in the home office, um, and then on the other hand, there will be the stream on the um, site itself. The home office services um, are dealing predominantly with the actual project management and coordination, uh, but then during the first, let's say, half of the project um, with the design review. Um, there will be then some um, senior engineers from the different various disciplines, as you can see here, i.e. some specific dedicated solar experts and in regards to the solar field, receivers, um, mobile salt um, system and so on. And then from each of the typical engineering disciplines, mechanical, electrical, INC, uh, there should be one head of uh, each of this uh, discipline, supported by a pool of experts. So this is how we structure typically um, an owner's engineering um, project. Besides that, there will be of course um, some document control, some scheduling, um, someone who is responsible for uh, HSD, yeah? uh, health, safety and environment, uh, which is um, uh, very important in any project. And last, um, there will be then also some sectoral support from the home office. Once the site activities are starting at the project site itself, um, the site is going to be mobilized and there will be then also a construction site manager put in place 
um, who is uh, responsible for any of the homeless engineering activities at the project site. Of course, in close coordination with the uh, project manager overseeing the entire project and the engineering team in the home office. So once the project developed, uh, we're going to see this in a second on the next slide, uh, more and more um, bonus engineering experts from different disciplines are going to be mobilized and move to the site. And again, it, uh, it's important that every discipline is covered by the bonus engineer unless the owner itself has in specific areas the whole capabilities and experience um, to cover this portion as well. Um, the different engineering um, or engineers at the project sites are then supported um, by site inspectors. And last on the bottom you can see there's a warranty engineer um, or an engineering team depending on the bonus engineering assignment and the complexity of the project and also the stipulations in the contract um, who are then dealing with um, the, um, the, the, the left say the left items during the warranty period. We will also discuss this uh, further in a minute. So very briefly, this is a typical many schedule of the bonus engineer. Uh, what you can see here now is the positions which I showed you on the org chart uh, just before uh, um, on a time, uh, timely sequence. So concerning the home office, uh, there will be a set the project management as well as um, then the engineering design review activities. And typically, the duration of the project uh, in the range of uh, 50 to 100 megawatt, as it is the case in China, is two years. Potentially, there is a limited notice to proceed, um, prior NTP notice to proceed, which would mean that the uh, bonus engineer would also be engaged earlier, but let's assume, as in this example, there's not. So, starts with the NTP and at first, for the first year, there's then the, um, there are the activities like design review, which is done in the home office, um, as well as procurement support um, and so on. And uh, hence, the majority of works is done in the home office. The more the site develops, uh, we have seen before the pictures of uh, the Linda project, uh, there will be at first civil engineering, um, capabilities required um, and so on. Then some mechanical erection works uh, will start and then uh, last comes electrical and IMC assignments. Typically, we are moving then the design review activities at one point to the project site in order to be more efficient. Yeah? Um, after approximately one year, all the design review activities um, and uh, left uh, procurement support activities are shifted to the site and being taken over um, from the team at the project site itself. Now the next uh, couple of slides um, uh, will contain the specific activities of the, uh, of the owner's engineer. And as we have learned, there are many, and uh, the time here now is too short to go into detail to any of them, so if someone thinks there's something, something left out, uh, please come after the presentation to see me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions regarding those activities itself. So giving you at first a brief overview about the specific uh, main activities no? uh, and then going in a little bit more detail into the commissioning and into the testing. As this is uh, often um, the most interesting um, topic for the audience itself. So project management services are covering um, the whole range, ID, um, scheduling support, contract management, making sure that uh, anything is stipulated in the EPC contracts and so on, um, is covered in the works uh, being executed. Um, and then obviously also uh, in terms of the payment milestones, um, the bonus engineer makes sure that each of the payment milestones has been reached and payments can be released by the owner. Um, and then of course there will be some uh, reporting Required. Typically, um, this is done in weekly pre reports and then uh, more uh, comprehensive monthly focus reports, which includes then all the different items um, mentioned before. At first, the uh, bonus engineer will also prepare the project manual, um, which is then later being uh, combined with the site construction manual once the site has been um, 
uh, the site activities has been started. And this manual contains all the procedures um, for the different activities in, uh, in order to make sure that everyone is uh, on the same page and the activities are running smoothly. So the monitoring and control activities uh, will ensure that the contractor services and works are completed on the schedule within the budget and according to the contract, i.e. the specifications stipulated in the contract. Now the second uh, main activity is the um, support during the technical procurement. And here to start with, it really depends on the project structure itself. Yeah? Whether I have now a turnkey EPC contract or whether I have multiple lot contract. Um, uh, <coughs> for the solar field, for the power block, uh, BOE systems, and so on. Um, and uh, hence, also the role of the owner's engineer uh, comes um, or changes a little. Um, but it has to be mentioned again uh, that uh, this is then not to be um, compared with a um, typical PCM project, uh, which uh, is covered in another presentation, the difference between those um, type of projects. So in any case, it could be that um, the owner's engineer uh, is required to prepare technical specifications for some of the lots on behalf of the owner. Um, and then subsequently it provides a bit of clarifications and the evaluation of the same. Otherwise, um, the owner's engineer often then also evaluates um, the bits of major um, equipment and subsystems. Yeah? Um, after, and this is the first point here, after the vendors have been approved, qualified by the owner's engineer. So this is a very important task um, at the beginning of each project um, to qualify actually the vendors for each of the main components and then also clusters of systems. Um, additional uh, aspects in this regard are change control um, and uh, once then the bits um, are coming in, uh, the owner's engineer also makes sure that uh, there are adequate spare parts being included um, in the bits, um, i.e. Um, the owner's engineer starts to, um, um, with the elaborating a, com a comprehensive spare part list. And uh, very important uh, are the uh, quality assurance and audits or activities itself. Yeah? And during the procurement, um, one of the main activities are the factory acceptance testings. Um, which um, um, are done for the main equipment itself. So, and this really uh, is, is um, ranging a lot. Uh, there are projects uh, where Fikina is doing 20 um, acceptance tests, and there are others um, currently, for instance, uh, uh, in one project we're doing 100. So, for 100 components, Fikina experts are verifying each of the factory acceptance tests and uh, subsequently prepare the reports and so on and so forth. So it really depends on the project setup, let's say, and of course also on the owner. Um, the more factory acceptance uh, testings are verified by the owner, uh, the lower the risk uh, that any of the equipment provided to site uh, has some uh, more function and there will be some issues later on. So the next one, um, next activity, as mentioned, uh, is the engineering design review activities, uh, which are done in the home office. Um, so at the beginning of the um, project, there will be a submission schedule will be agreed um, amongst the parties um, with the submission dates and the document types. So there will be three different types, generally, for the project, uh, for approval by the owner's engineer, for review, or for information. Uh, approval are the main documents, data sheets, mass balances, and so on. Review is, for example, the contractor's um, time schedule, and for information are site studies um, prepared by the um, by the contractor and so on. Um, documents <coughs> are typically um, uh, issued in um, packages, so-called transmittals, and uh, as you can see on the bottom uh, the screen, uh, they then predominantly uh, reviewed um, by the owner's engineer in the home office, yeah? but there will be always also um, documents be provided um, to the um, owner, of course, yeah? and uh, after some time, also <coughs> the owner's engineering staff at the site. 
as mentioned, the design review, the end of it, is typically done on the project site itself. There will be electronic public, uh, public uh, documents provided, um, which are um, uh, saved on um, a document uh, control server, uh, which is generally also being provided by the owner's engineer and taken care of by the owner's engineer. Then uh, here you can see here a long list for the next activity, uh, which is construction and commissioning management. Um, I won't go into detail in any uh, or in, in, uh, in every uh, one uh, due to lack of time. But once again, if you have questions, please come and see us. Um, the key task um, is um, to make sure, together with the home staff, to, to, um, that the submitted construction drawings are uh, correct and um, be approved by the owner's engineer. The owner's engineer is then um, doing all the site supervision of the construction activities and the erection activities. Um, the owner's engineer provides then daily uh, inspections and monitoring. Uh, so each of the um, engineers and inspectors are having then the individual schedule agreed with the project manager on site and follows up uh, these uh, activities and inspects uh, accordingly each of the activities itself. Um, once uh, construction gets to an end, um, there will be then the verification and, uh, of the pre-commissioning activities and the uh, initial testing. Um, after some time, the owner's engineer will start uh, the development of the punch list and follow up um, accordingly the punch list. Um, and then other services um, are um, dealing with change orders, very important with the change um, in the design or, or other aspects. And uh, then, very important is the review of any of the testing procedures. So, to summarize, owner's engineer ensures uh, that uh, the project um, or any activities on site um, will ensure that the performance, the quality of work, and the cost and delivery dates are met. Now coming to the commissioning and, uh, and subsequently to the testing, this gives you a brief overview, high level overview of the commissioning activities. There will be at first the cold commissioning, yeah, followed by the hot commissioning. Um, during the cold commissioning, there will be then, um, by the owner's engineer, the signing of direction adherence certificates. Yeah. This is done for each of the um, turnover packages. And uh, once this is done and uh, code commissioning proceeds, there will be then at the end the mechanical completion. Uh, once again, certified by the owner's engineer for the different uh, TOPs. Once that is done, um, there will be then the start of the hot commissioning. And obviously, not each and any single system gets for a code commission and hot commission. So there is. Uh, for the individual subsystems, over some, uh, also always some overlap and so on. Um, but this is uh, in general um, the, the, the procedure. Um, so the hot commissioning um, will mean that um, I, I first generate solar heat um, with my solar field, whether it's a power electric system or solar power system, any of which. Um, and then um, I enforce the hot commissioning, uh, ID steam generation, and then power generation of the uh, power plant. Once that is reached, um, there will be then the commission clearing certificate being issued by the office engineer um, for each of the uh, systems to be defined in the contract itself. And uh, once that has been reached, yeah, um, the project uh, goes over into um, into the different um, testing phases. Uh, so there will be at first uh, the trial operation, then there will be the provisional performance testing, and then after that, um, once this milestone has been reached, there will be then the reliability test before the commercial operation date um, has been reached. So briefly, the performance testing overview is uh, typically for CCP power plants, a multiple day test campaign which lasts for one or two weeks. Um, it depends on the, on the owner, how stringent uh, he wants to have uh, this testing. Um, and uh, the this test typically includes uh, steady state testing of the net power output, or most, most importantly, 
Um, there will be a multiple day test um, of the entire plant um, against the performance model. Um, and then there, will be, uh, then there will be also the system performance tests. Once again, it really depends on the project structure. Now this one here is uh, the typical um, uh, tests um, outlined for a CCT plant, but obviously if there's a uh, um, multiple lot approach uh, being applied, uh, the testing schedule or the testing procedures also need to be adapted accordingly, uh, what has been done also by us before. Uh, Below you can see the codes and standards and also guidelines currently uh, under development. Uh, so um, there's still the lack of a specific CSP um, code in terms of the testing. But um, nowadays there's pretty much already a standard what we can see in the industry, uh, but it's not written in an actual official code. Besides that, uh, there are guidelines mentioned. Uh, we are currently working in the project called CSP Bank. Um, Bank stands for bankability, and that deals predominantly with the performance modeling. So it's a large group of companies working in this project in order to develop a real guideline for performance modeling, uh, i.e., um, the, the mathematical functions behind each of the single subsystems in the entire plan, so that um, everyone speaks the same language when it comes to uh, the performance modeling of a CSP plant. Why is this so important? Uh, skip this, uh, it's uh, some uh, performance testing procedures, um, which are what is stipulated in the same. But more important is this one here. Uh, there you can see how this is generally been working um, during a performance test. Um, there's the mentioned performance model. Um, if it's an EPC turnkey project to be provided by the EPC contractor, to be verified again by the owner's engineer with its own model. And uh, then there will be a comparison between the modeled um, power output values and other stipulated guarantees, which uh, often is also then the water consumption of the plant, in, in case there's some fossil fuel firing, and also some heat rates and so on, um, against the actual outputs, yeah? i.e. recorded by the um, ECS system during the performance testing. And then there will be a comparison done by the bonus engineer um, and then the performance tests um, are either accepted or rejected. On the right hand side you can see one example uh, uh, which showcases um, the final acceptance tests of uh, one of the plants where we have been involved. Um, action performance uh, meeting the predicted ones. Uh, ID, um, performance tests here have been met and the certificate has been issued. So once this is all put together, the mentioned the commission certificates, um, the commission clearance, um, the reliability test run has been passed, and most importantly, the performance test um, has been achieved, or let's say the limit, which is stipulated in the contract, has been reached. All the documents required for provisional acceptance um, uh, are ready and been provided and been reviewed by the OMS engineer and there are no major punch items open. Um, the owner, i.e. the OMS engineer, will provide the required provision acceptance certificate, which means that the uh, preconditions for the commercial operating day are met. Uh, so this is, these are the main activities to be conducted in order to uh, finish off construction and commissioning and testing activities. So last, uh, to summarize, um, why to engage an owner's engineer? An owner's engineer can provide the project um, a one-stop support and successfully plan, execute and implement the CSP project. And this um, is the case for each project phase, i.e. from the project idea up until the commercial operation. Uh, covering also the warranty period. Um, why is there the option of a one-stop support? Because the owner's engineer can uh, has access to a large pool of experts covering the dis different uh, individual disciplines. If there's any project uh, any problem in the project, the owner's engineer will have the right expert in hand to deal with this project. And um, the owner's engineer has the benefit that he can um, gain from his experience. He uh, has from 
many, many other projects, similar projects. So we do have the lessons learned from other projects, what went wrong, what can we do better the next time. Um, that means that the owner, engineer ensures that all works and deliverables are in line with the contract, the specification uh, predominantly, um, meet the relevant standards and regulations, and of course the owner's implementation. This will overall reduce the risk of a project, will reduce the cost of the project, and um, the last message, um, the mention point here, they are in particular important uh, for first of its kind projects. I mean, in China, it won't be first of its kind projects in terms of the technology, uh, but in terms of the CCP technology in a new country, in a new environment. And there are certain other aspects. Um, um, we have the COVID um, as an example of the very harsh um, environmental conditions, the very low temperatures uh, during winter, and so on. So, if there's time, I quickly go um, to some of our examples uh, elsewhere. Um, and we'll have a look at it later and um, come to see us to discuss them. So, um, one oldest engineering job uh, which we conducted was the Shams One project uh, in the United Arab Emirates, um, which is a 100 megawatt uh, property truck power plant. Um, and uh, here, Fichtner was at first doing all the feasibility studies, um, then the tendering on behalf of the owner, um, which was Master. And once the contract has been negotiated, um, we also received the oldest engineering assignment of the later IPP. Um, the uniqueness of this project was that it was the first project which uh, got constructed in very harsh uh, desert environments. Um, so the site preparation was uh, massive. Uh, if you have seen the amounts of earth of sand which has been, uh, which had to be moved and the, the ground protection and so on activities, it was uh, quite unique and the project is working very well, um, meeting or exceeding the performance. So this is uh, quite a good example here. Um, the mention of new projects, um, two parabolic truck power plants and uh, one solar tower um, plant. The first one already in operation, which you can see here, the newer one, 160 megawatt, and uh, the other two um, built by a Chinese um, EPC contractor, Sepco 3. And this, uh, they are both currently under construction. Um, and here, it has uh, not a total um, engineering role itself, um, because this has been actually split. There's a very strong independent engineer uh, which is responsible for yeah, a large extent of the typical owners engineering services. So in IPP, independent power producer project, there's often such an independent engineer also involved which works under the PPA. And um, sometimes this role is quite small, let's say, and only in specific uh, cases the independent engineer gets actually active and this relates mainly to the final performance testing, but in this case, Fichtner is doing um, in total 180 factory acceptance tests. So our experts are flying around the world uh, to the different factories uh, non-stop at the moment. Um, and then um, we also verify all the testing procedures uh, and uh, our staff is on site um, at the moment as well, but predominantly during the commissioning and the testing phase. Another example is the Puerto Avado project, uh, which is the first uh, commercial um, panel in a panel project, um, for which Richten also was um, advising the owner, which are um, several Swiss utilities from the very beginning, um, conducting some personal diligences for, in, uh, for them, and then once they had invested in the project, Richten was um, carrying out the different owners engineering um, services. And the project is also successfully be implemented. This meeting, as we have seen in the slides before, the performance. Another one um, is the key Solar One project, uh, for which Fichtner was the oldest engineer during the bidding phase. Uh, that's another example. So sometimes the oldest engineering engagements are um, have been started uh, quite early in the project, and here we were advising the project company up until uh, financial close. Uh, this project is a 50 megawatt uh, solar power project. And last, uh, another project uh, in Spain is an example of some hybrid projects. Um, 
uh, is the biomass people check in Spain, um, so the combination of um, solid biomass and uh, CSP. Quite an interesting and complex project, uh, which uh, Fichtner, together with its Spanish subsidiary, executed also as a bonus institute. So I have to say um, thank you, Fichtner. Um, if you have any questions, please come and see me um, after the next session.